Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi there. Hey, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Situation Room. This is a virtual quilt retreat that we do on the weekdays at 7 a.m. Central, and I see you guys all in the chat already. Good morning to all of you. And you know what, you guys, I want you to know, I just love y'all. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. I just, I have such a good time doing this every day and I really appreciate you. So, oh, the love of my life has just come in the room. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> he always does that stupid voice. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I see the kitchen is open. We've got some ladies working over there. Please wander over, see what has been shared for you. There is coffee and juice and there are uh, things for breakfast already this morning. No fat, no calories. How great is that, right? Okay, so today's the big day, you guys. I am doing a live this afternoon at noon Pacific on Countdown to Christmas for Sewing Machines Plus. And I'm going to be showing a demo on how to embroider Christmas cards or greeting cards. We're going to use the designs by Juju Design. And I'm just so excited to be sharing those with you. One of the things I love about their designs or Julie's designs, and uh, she tells me Margie watches. Hi, Margie. Great to see you. Uh, that um, there's a placement line that goes down and that's wonderful. So you cannot mess these up, right? That's just awesome. You don't have to worry about, is it straight? Is it crooked? Did I get it too high, too low? So that's really neat. And, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. <clears throat> this is going to be great. You know, this is one of those uh, one of those projects that uh, for the people that are special to you in, in your life. Uh, my half brother has a birthday coming up on the 19th. So I think I'm going to stitch something out for him later on today, uh, either before or after. So I don't know. Might be his birthday card that we do today. But I really wanted to do something for Christmas. So. All right. Yeah. Good to see everybody here. So uh, lots of chatter. Oh my goodness, y'all, we've been talking about this. I dropped it on the floor. This foot for stitch in the ditch on high shank straight stitch machines. Okay, we've been talking a lot about this. My email has blown up with all kinds of things. So yesterday we discussed that the Brother Luminaire and therefore the Baby Lock Solaris as well is a high shank machine. This foot is specific for straight stitch machines. Will it work on the Luminaire? Yes, it will. I tested it myself and it will work. But you've got to put your Luminaire or whichever machine if you're using a domestic, a traditional domestic machine that has the needle plate so your needle can do a zigzag, which is what I would consider a traditional domestic machine, then you've got to put your machine in the straight stitch, on the straight stitch, which on the Luminaire is number four. You can't use no, number one because the needle doesn't line up with the hole. So I put it on stitch number four and then it has a left-right shift, and I shifted it right to, um, or left, which way, whichever. I shifted it toward the, toward the brains of the machine. <laughs> I can never get that straight. If you're looking at it, is this right or is my left? Whatever. Anyway, toward the brains of the machine, and I did it on a plus 4.75 or 5.0. And we had talked about that months ago, being able to get a straight stitch on your machine and there was a setting and I'll be darned if I couldn't remember what it was, but I played around with it. I was able to use this machine, this foot successfully. Okay. So I just wanted to straighten that up because some folks were saying that you couldn't use the foot if it wasn't a straight stitch machine, you just have to put that machine into the straight, you know, number four on the Luminaire is the straight stitch. So setting was four. Yes. Okay, good. Dave and YJ. There we go. Thank you so much. Or 5.5. Somewhere in there, you guys have to figure that out. 
don't just hit the button to go. Okay. You guys need to use your hand wheel real slow and get that needle as close to center in the hole of that as possible. Okay. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, Mary. Santa is bringing her a Scanna Cup for Christmas. Yay. You're going to love it. You're just going to love it. Good for you. How exciting. Being able to cut out all of your applique fabrics on the Scanna Cut and then take it a step further, import those vector graphics the Scanna Cut creates into embroidery software and then turning those into applique designs. So, Okay. You got my shout out about the crew treats. Oh, good. Yay. That's awesome. Yeah. That was so nice. That was so nice. They were just so sweet about that. I just, I had a big Ziploc bag full of individual. So Dave is, uh, Dave is a flight attendant and he emailed me and he said, we just love it when people show appreciation for us. So I, I did little white, um, you know, those little see-through bags that you can get. They're, they're like fabric. I don't know. And I just put some Hershey's Kisses with almonds in there and a little note that said, just a small thank you for what you do. You are appreciated. Little note in there. Pop those, you know, all, he said a flight crew of 10 overseas. So I put 10 of them into a Ziploc bag. And as I'm boarding the plane, a guy's standing there looking at his phone and I said, hey, and he looks at me and I go, this is for you guys. <laughs> And don't you know, he came back, he brought me a little um, American Airlines. It was a nice little kit. It had a mask in it. Might've had a little, uh, you know, a hand wipe or something, some earbuds, you know, earphones, those things they hand out and uh, a little glass of champagne to start the trip. So that was very cool. Thank you. So you guys, you know, flight attendants, I tell you what, that is a, a thankless job for sure right? Definitely a thankless job dealing with the public. Ooh, I don't think I could do it. My, my tolerance for stupidity is pretty low. And I would be like, would you just turn the bag to the side and sit down? <laughs> You're not shopping for a car. Find a seat and get your butt buckled in. <laughs> I just don't have a, that's why I do my stuff by myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So we've got, do we have new people here? Do I see we have a newbie? If you're new, please let us know in the chat. Uh, we've got some uh, folks that are in the chat that are, um, they're on the welcoming committee and they're just, their mission in life is to welcome you here. Say hi, make sure you know where everything is, where the kitchen's at, you know, and all of that. So um, yeah. Okie dokie. So Yesterday we were taught, we uh, attached the binding to the front of my piece on earth quilt. Today will be the finishing. You know what I didn't do? Hmm. I didn't cut squares to turn into the hanging sleeve for this. I need squares for the hanging sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some stuff up. I'll figure it out. I know what I'll do. So I'll take you guys with me. I'll turn the camera around so y'all can see what I'm doing. But I did stitch in the ditch yesterday using that foot and it's wonderful. Let me show you. <clears throat> I stitched in the ditch like right here, right along this line. Can you see that? Why? No, you cannot. You cannot see it a bit. Now, when you stitch in the ditch, let me show you on the back if you can see it. There is a line there. There's the line. See that? Okay. So when you stitch in the ditch, especially when you're doing like a wall hanging like this, okay? Now, let me back up. I did not have to stitch in the ditch in order to... Um, make sure that the quilt batting was going to stay in place. The quilt batting was fully quilted already using the clear blue tiles from Kimber Bell. So that was done. All the stitch in the ditch did was prevent the backing from being a big balloon, puffy, right? 
if I was ever to wash this. That's all it was for was to do that. So I just stitched it so that the backing was adhered to the top and the batting, which was already pre-quilted. Now, when you stitch in the ditch, this foot has a little toe on it. You see that little toe that sticks out right here, this little guy, okay? It's got a little toe. This is me personally. This is just Becky talking, okay, y'all? I, I don't like to press my seams open when I'm going to be doing, <laughs> you like my haircut? Y'all, it's, it's straight. I got my haircut yesterday. It was just a trim. But she straightens it so she can make sure everything's <laughs> the right side to side. I'm even, right? When we get finished here today, I'm washing it and get, letting the curl come back. And then I'll, I'll straighten it out. So anyway, thank you, L Favor. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> So, okay, so I don't press my seams open or if I am, if I figured, you know, I just don't, do, I just don't press my seams open on these long seams where I think I might be stitching in the ditch because when you do that, you got my thing. When, when you don't press your seams open, and you go to sew this thing, believe it or not, there's a high side and a low side. And the high side has the seam allowance underneath it. If they're pressed open, it's hard to tell. There is no high side or low side. So the high side is the side that you want to your right as it's going underneath the foot. And that's why this particular foot has what the independent suspension that makes this half of it go. It has a spring. Okay. The high side is what gets pushed over by the little toe for the needle to go down in the seam in the ditch. And then the, the high side kind of relaxes after, it, after the foot does its thing, the high side relaxes back over the stitch and you cannot see it. So not pressing your seams open if you're going to stitch in the ditch is a way to ensure that that seam is, is that is the stitch is hidden. That's kind of a little trick. You want to look at it and go, okay, where's the high side? Where's the low side? So let me see. Now I did not stitch. Let's see. I did do this one. I even stitched in the ditch between these light color fabrics right here. Cannot see it. Not one bit. Not at all. That toe is the bomb, you guys. I love it. Thank you, Scotty Talk. <laughs> so just kind of think about that. That when you're going to do that, you want to stitch with the high side toward your right. So that toe, put, and it doesn't matter if it's this foot or the, the blind hem foot, either one. You want that toe to shove that fabric over a little bit. It's hard for the toe to shove the fabric if your seams are pressed open. That's just what I'm getting at. What is the name of the foot? It's called an industrial high shank stitch in the ditch foot. And it's from Ken Sewing. We've been talking about it for the last couple of days. So, so I'm going to be stitching in the ditch to sew this binding down now. All right, something else I wanted to talk to you guys about before I get to stitching. So y'all know that I like to get my long arm patterns, my digitized digital long arm patterns from Urban Elements, right? Well, I wanna show you, for those of you that are, you know, you think Urban Elements only has like digital long arm patterns. I'm gonna pull them up, <clears throat> I'm on my, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And I want to let you know about this. Where are we at here? We're at about 14 minutes. Okay. I'm going to share my screen with y'all. This, this is great. So you don't have to have a long arm to be able to do this. Now, Urban Elements puts 
a different design on every week. They put it on sale. So I'm going to share it with y'all. Let me make sure. Yes, you can see that. Okay, so this is their homepage. Okay. And when you scroll down a little bit, it's elements with a Z on the end. See that? Urban elements with a Z.com. So when you scroll down a little bit, here's your weekly design deal. And look at the feather they've got this time. Isn't that awesome? And look at the beautiful design that it does. And then you get a sample of how it's going to stitch out. It's on there. So that's wonderful. I, I just absolutely love this. Okay. So if you go to get this and you click on, let's see. I've got to change out. I've got to change out my screen so you guys can see because it went to a new window. So I've got to change this out. Okay. So if you want to get the design, yeah, you can see that. So here it is. So normally designs like industry standard is about $15 for any given design. Well, here is this one. So this is the one that goes from side to side if it was digital. Here it is. Now look, they've got a stencil and it's only $4.40. So you can get the stencil and then you can put the stencil over your project and use a pounce. And then you can use the domestic machine, you know, put it in, drop your feed dogs, put on your little, um, you know, your hopping foot on your domestic and go to town on it and stitch it using a stencil. So you don't have to have a computer. And then they have what are called design boards. Now a design board is used, you buy one and it's designed to go on a long arm frame. It's a heavy, it's wood is what it is. It's wood and it's long, all right? It's so big. On the back of a long arm, some of you have got, like there is a, a stylus that comes off the back end of the carriage that the machine sits on and the stylus goes down into the groove of the feather because the, the, the board has a feather design grooved into it. And then that stylus just goes around and you move the machine with the stylus in the grooves on the board. So it's very cool. You do not have to have a, a, a machine, a, this is not just for, you know, robotics, long arms with robotics. So you can do it as a robotic. You can do it as a, a template, a stencil that you can pounce, okay, or draw if you're so inclined. Pounces are easier. The iron off pounce is really easy. And then there is the design board. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So if I click on this, then you get, you can see the Bountiful Feathers design. And here's where you can get, here's the digital. You would tell it you want the digital design. You can get a self print if you wanted to print it out yourself. You've got to tape all your pages together and that'll work. And then it's got it as an embroidery design. So now you can get these as an embroidery design. So you could kind of do an end to end as embroidery. So that's cool. And then they have the paper and the paper is the long tube scroll that lays out all along the back end of your long arm frame. If you're on, or maybe you've got a cutie and you're doing that with a laser on the back, same thing. So Urban Elements is your one-stop shop to be able to get uh, those designs. So I just wanted to share that you have the grace frame with the shelf and the boards. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. So this is Tiny up in Kerrville. She's got the grace frame with the shelf and the boards, and she uses her PQ 1500 on the frame and the stylus, and it works amazing. So that's great, Tiny. Margaret, thank you. Yeah, that's that's what that's designed for. And Urban Ellens, my Texas girls, Urban Elements, uh, they're headquartered out of New Braunfels, just north of San Antonio. So that's nice to support a U.S. company, right? So, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, all right. You guys are like, I'm near you. Let's get together and sew, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. 
Okie dokie. So let me go ahead and get to stitching on this and finish this. Oh, I've got to make my, I've got to make my, uh, my, my fabric stash which is across the room is where I keep my fabric I have it all in um what I've got it all on wire racks on the other side of the room here this is a u-line individual tub thing these are for my fat quarters and then I've got scraps down here and I've got my black fabric from Pat Sloan that I used for the backing. I need a rotary cutter. And I'll come back around here to you guys. So what I was talking about with the um, with the paper patterns or the boards, okay? So if you've got a if you've got a quilt frame like this on the back, this is what those quilt frames look like. So this is if you're thinking about getting a long arm and and you're going to hear a lot about that today on the Soul Machines Plus Countdown to Christmas. So if there's, you know, when they're promoting these things. So what, what most people do that do not have robotics, okay, is you'll put a set of handles back here on the back end of this, uh, the body of the long arm. There are, there's mounts that you can get here for rear handles, all right? And you'll lay out, a long roll of paper that that would have that feather design on it and then there is a laser that comes off like the side here on the wheel or something like that it'll have a laser or it'll have the stylus that sticks down for the boards so the laser comes out you put the laser right on the end of the paper and then you're holding the handles here and you're just moving this machine around and you're following the laser on the paper like that and what's happening is the needle's doing its job up in the front uh, of the machine. So that's how that is all for. And then so you can do the paper or you can do a board. And it's very, very cool to be able to finish your own projects like that. So those of you that are spending hundreds of dollars for your long armors, and if you're a long armor, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to run you out of business by any means. but. Uh, it's a very cool thing to be able to finish your own stuff. So I need three, I think um, that's 37 across. Maybe, I don't know, two would do it, right? I'm looking for my squares. I'm going to turn into my triangles. So maybe three eight-inch squares would work. Yeah, maybe three eight-inch squares. I'm guessing. We'll just go with it. So this is the method that I learned from Laura Koya on So Very Easy. <clears throat> One of you sent me her video on this, and I almost fell out of my chair when I learned it. I'm like, oh, my word, I can't believe I didn't know that or think of that. So I just need three squares. I've got four because I'm lazy, and this is how I'm going to cut it. I need a ruler, right? Rulers would be handy. I've got a 10 inch ruler over here. Tell my cameraman to turn this so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm not leaving you alone by yourselves. So here's Missouri star, 10 inch square, handy dandy. Hmm? Just follow me around my room. This is what I do. <laughs> yeah, so. I think I need a new blade, of course, right? Aha, excellent. There we go. <clears throat> this is the same fabric that the backing is made from. All right. Handy to have that there. That's that June Taylor cut and press, and it just turns my ironing station into a quick rotary cutter mat love it so you just fold these into a triangle like that this is a 10 inch square okay and then 
fold the triangle again in half until it is so big. So that's all I'm doing. I want to make sure my edges are pretty even. My raw edges are pretty. I'm just going to go ahead and press these so they stay put. I need three of them. But this is what I'm going to do for the hanging sleeve. So incredibly simple. And I can't believe the point of this is, is that I don't have to hand stitch all 30 inches of the back of the project for the hanging sleeve. I just have to stitch three points down. I'm going to capture the top edges of these triangles into the binding. Okay. And then I just have to, that four letter word, hand stitch three points down on the back as opposed to the whole 30 and a half inches because I'm lazy. There. Okay, what brand of iron am I using? Sharon wants to know. That is a Sapporo 527 gravity fed iron. That thing is preferred by garment seamstresses. I love it. It's ugly, but effective. Um, there's no water in, I have it in my Amazon store. There's no water in the iron, so it never spits out brown water on your project. It, there's a condenser on the outside of it that turns water to steam for you that hangs above it on an IV pole. I've had that thing for nine years. Plus the safety nannies, um, it doesn't shut off. They didn't get to it, you know, so that it has an auto shut off. I don't like that. Could I catch the point in a ditch seam? Ooh, story time with Cece. Wouldn't that be ideal if I had a ditch seam? I could do that. Mm -hmm. If it if it worked out, that'd be cool. That would be like winning the lotto, right? All right, let me put my ditch foot back on here. Let's see. My foot down so everything sits the way it's supposed to. Okay. I've got two sets of labels here. I get asked all the time, where do I get my labels? I get them from the Dutch label shop.com. I have two different kinds of labels. So I have larger woven labels. These are woven. Okay. And they've got a line on the back. And the only reason they have a line on the back is for me to put the year that I made it. And then anything else I want to write if necessary. My woven labels, I'll show you the back inside of them so you can see that they're woven. Okay, that's the inside of the label. So my woven labels are for heirloom quilts that I'm making, you know, that matter. It's very subjective. <laughs> and then I have printed labels. So here's my printed ones. They're smaller. It's got a line on the back, but you can see it's just printed. There's no, there's no threads. So my printed label are for like wall hangings, you know, things that don't, I'm not gifting. I guess that's a good way to say it. If I'm gifting it, it's it's going to get a woven label. But if I'm not gifting it, then I just put on a printed one. So DutchLabelShop.com. And the lady that I worked with there, what was her name? Natalie? I can't remember. Lorraine? Something like that. Fabulous to work with. Because I was like, I want I want my logo on the front. I want a line on the back so I can put the year that I made it at a minimum. She was great. Sent me all kinds of proofs until I, it was exactly the way I wanted it. And it was great. So, okay. So I'm going to have my little printed label on the back of this quilt. Now this quilt that I'm working on, for those who haven't been with us for the last couple of days, I've got so many new subscribers. Thank you all so much. Ooh. Oh, the brownies are done. Excellent. So 
I wanted to um, let you guys know I have the Quilted Witch Quilt Pattern and a fabric, a big box of fabric. That's the whole kit for the Quilted Witch by Lori Holt. I'm going to give that away when I hit 70,000 subscribers. So I'm at like 68.3 right now. So you guys keep sharing me with your, uh, your guilds and your friends and your sewing buddies and all that. So uh, I could give that away to you. Uh, U.S. shipping only, please. <laughs> because the box weighs a ton. Okay. And that is courtesy of Lady M. She's a benefactor of my channel. Yeah, you guys hit the thumbs up button, please. That helps out the channel a whole bunch. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin my triangles to the back. Where's the center? Right here. So let me put a pin there so I know where center is. Okay. And then one of the triangles, doesn't matter which way it goes, I'm going to pin that. I need to put that center. Get that right there so it doesn't look cattywampus, right? We all know what that means. And then I'm going to pin... I'm going to fold this over it and just kind of pin it in place to make sure that these guys stay where I want them. Don't move, please. And this edge, I want the raw edge all captured up inside of there. All right, so there's my center point. So could I stitch in the ditch and get that center point on like if I was to stitch it it's actually right here I probably could because there's this a ditch line right there I could probably go right over that and sew it down and for those of us who hate to hand stitch that might be just what I do <laughs> who, knows? <laughs> who knows okay and then I want to get and I'm going to go ahead and take this and pin this point down so it doesn't get froggy and decide to flip up, right? And get caught when I'm not paying attention, which happens. Now on this triangle, so I've got one side of it that's closed and the other one is open. It doesn't matter which way really, but I'm going to put the closed edge of this triangle to the outside. So I'm just going to put the point right, right in the corner. Oh, you guys, this is better than sewing on a hanging sleeve all day long. I do not want to do that. So this is three 10 inch squares folded into diagonally twice. Okay. That's what I did. And again, I got this idea. Laura Koya did this from so very easy. All right. My, I need my 90 degree plastic template again. So I have a piece of plastic. This is a piece of plastic off of a grid that goes on the back of your long arm frame. I cut this off because it was 12 feet long. I got this at Urban Elements as well, okay? So this was 12 feet long, and I only needed 10 feet because I only have a 10-foot frame. So let me... And I like it because it's got my quarter-inch seam on there. Okay. So I'm going to fold this over, pin this down here on the side, and then this... Um, I got to think about it. My brain. I, I got to think about how to do this. Let me do this. There. That's what it is. I'll put the in there. Fold that down. Very tight. Ah, perfect. Perfect little miter there. Okay. Let me show you guys what I just did. I used the, 
I use this. Now you can do this with a piece of cardboard, like a cereal box cardboard or a piece of plastic. I got this idea from Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts. Okay, she just uses a plastic template for everything. Can you see how perfect that miter is on there? You probably can't because it's black, but those little points meet exactly right there. Okay. All right, so that one's done. And then let me do this one. <clears throat> And I'm going to put the outside fold, the singular fold to the outside. This is the only way I will ever do a hanging solution again. The only way. This is just so easy. Oh, my goodness. I probably could have gotten away with two, but you just don't know. You don't want to get a droop in the middle, you know. Nothing worse than a droopy quilt. Let me put this on here. All right. And fold this one down. Okay. And put this over here. Make that nice and tight. And Line up the top edge and the side edge, and then fold this over exactly where it needs to go. Get that in there, get that straight. <clears throat> ah, perfect. Yeah, that looks good. It's even hard for me to see and it because it's black on black. So I know it's hard for you guys to see. I'm sorry. All right, put this in here. I'm going to pin these mitered points, corners together. Stay put. All right. That's good. So let me go ahead and start sewing this down. Um, all righty. And then I need my little label. What do I do with that? My little printed label. I'm going to put that down here on this corner. Okay, fold that over. Alrighty, and you go right there. So that way I don't forget to put my label on. Do it ahead of time. I hate that. Go to make a label and everything and then forget to sew it on. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> all righty. Now, all I do, since I stitched it from the front, now I've got this cool blind hem foot. I'm just folding it over to the back. And I'm going to put the thread through the middle of the foot because it's got that split. There we go. I think we're ready. I've got black thread on top and black thread in the bottom. Look how quick this is. All right, pull that pin. Don't don't sew over your pins. I'll let you guys watch what I'm doing. Okay. I got to get right up in there till I can't see the white fabric anymore. Alrighty. Ow. I should use cream on top, but I've got black over here. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Oh, this is where you could use the stiletto. All right. On one of these seam rippers that my husband makes. This is a perfect use for the stiletto. When you've got a big bunch that you've got to move and it doesn't want to, it's being difficult. We're going through a lot of layers of fabric on that, uh, that corner. Looks good, you guys.
It helps on these machines if you've got a knee lift to raise the presser foot and allow the fabric to relax under the needle every so often. When you've got the right tools for the job, guys, look how fast this goes. So when I'm doing this, I had that one all pinned, this side all pinned down already, but now on this side, I don't have it pinned down. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that everything is tucked up under the binding, fold it over nice and even. What is that? What is that doing there? Okay. So just make sure everything is tucked up under there nice and put away so it's pretty all right and i try to make sure that the binding that's on the top that i see is the same width all the way down and that pretty much gives you the same uh, that pretty much gives you the same distance of stitch on the binding on the back. Now I'm not pulling from the back. I'm just, uh, guiding it. So when I get to about here and I've got to do the next corner, I'll grab all these extra little threads and tuck them inside the binding. And I like to fold down the corner where I'm going to turn toward. I like to fold that down first. Let me push that up in there. Put that down first. Make sure it's the right width on the outside. And then the side that I'm sewing on, I will do second. I need my 90 right here. Push that up in there and make sure my edges align and I'm straight on this side and at the top. Get my miter and fold it down. Ah, there. Perfect. Here's Frito, you guys. Frito just popped in. She's got to go over to my desk and see if I dropped any goldfish last night. Yeah, we got Frito time. Here she is. Oh, I got I gotta put you back here a little bit, girlfriend. I know there are people who just want. There we go. There she is. There's my Frito doll. Yeah, little baby girl. Yes, good morning. You're such a sweetheart. Yes. Oh, I love you too. Yes. All right. We got Frito time. <laughs> there we go. The camera moved off. Okay. Can't see where I'm sewing. I'm back, you guys. I'm back. I'm back. I don't know what happens. My camera gets a mind of its own, y'all. Okay. We'll leave it right there. 
Is that going to sit? Stay, right? Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I got to pay attention. I've got my tag. Make sure my tag is not all tucked up. All right. This is a needle minder. It's actually a little sheep. Isn't that cute? It's from Lori Holt. So that's a needle minder for, you know, you floss tube types. And I like to keep it right on the bed of my machine. See how the corners turned out. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Look at that. Didn't that turn out good? So that's where the hanging sleeve is there. Yeah, that looks great. I like it. Okay. Yeah, you need to try this binding method. It is so quick and easy. Once you get this down, you will not go back. I'm telling you. I mean, I want this done like this month, you know? <laughs> this is, oh my gosh, I was on, uh, I got an email from Connecting Threads yesterday. Had the cutest little chicken wall hanging. I'll link to it below when I get done here. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. I snatched up the kit. I'm gonna be sewing some chickens. I've got some loose threads here. Love my chickens. I've got five of them out back if you're new. And uh, I get about four to five eggs a day. One of them's a little bit of a slacker. She better straighten up or she's going to end up in the pot. I don't know freeloaders here on the Thompson. At the Thompson Castle Thompson. We don't do that. <laughs> All right. Here's the side I'm turning toward. I'm going on. So I'm going to do that one first. Fold it over and pin it. And then this one. Pretty, pretty miter. Oh, that's beautiful. Man, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. Jeez. Love it. My binding is two and a half inches, 63. Yeah, my binding is two and a half inches. Why doesn't that sound right? Oh, my gosh, you guys, I'm ghost sewing. Look at that. Ding, dang it. I heard... It just didn't sound right. My dad used to tell me all the time, listen to your motor. Okay. I'm ghost sewing. I need another black bobbin. Why don't you guys say something? Jeez. <laughs> let's see if I've got one pre-wound in here. I let's see. Green, no. A little bit of black. That's probably enough. Here's one. Okay. I need to sit down probably today or tomorrow and do a bunch of uh, a bunch of bobbin winding. Need to get that done.
All right, where'd that start at? All right here. Okay. Sure do love it when the luminaire tells me, hey lady, your bobbin's empty. That is a nice feature, isn't it? You don't get those fancy features on these near industrial machines. Corner all pinned, so it's smooth sailing from here. I look in the hole, and make sure I get right into that corner. tail here. This was from the uh, stitch in the ditch that I did. And I, while I'm thinking of it, let me stitch the, snip these off. These were the end of the bobbin. All right, this is the last side, you guys, and I'll be finished. Would you look how fast this is? It's like 10 minutes to get this finished. Once you get the hang of this, like I said, you will be just all over it. Heirloom show quilts, of course. Now, a lady did say yesterday that she has done this method and turned in her quilt for juried shows and won. So... You know, you never know. You never know. Home stretch. The toe that's on this foot is so wide, it just makes sure that that binding is pushed off to the side just enough. There we go, all done. That's it. I'm all done. Okay, so now that I've got these three triangles on here, okay, all I need to do <clears throat> is take a little needle and thread and stitch these points down. And a hanging rod will just slide right through and hold this up through all three of them. And it's all done. While I'm here, that's what I'll do with you guys. Now, always depends on the judge. That's absolutely right. You never know. How many hours a day do I sew? Oh, depends on the day, depends on the project. But any given day, I have got some sort of needle going up and down in this room. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Any given day, I do that. Where are you going? Yeah. It, you left and came back? Well, good. I'm glad you're back. Do I have any other tutorials coming? So I am going to be doing, 
if I could get my kit, that reminds me, thank you for asking that question. Did I sew the label on? Sure. Yeah, I did. Here it is right here, right there. Yep. Uh, one of the things, so I wanted to do on the 15th of every month, I wanted to sew, wanted to embroider uh, Kimberbell's mini quilts. I don't have my kit yet for the January mini quilt. And I wanted to do it tomorrow morning. Well, I don't have my kit. So I don't know what the deal is. <clears throat> she told me she was going to ship it out to me. Will I be doing on Wander Lane? Oh, no, Diane. No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? Girl, <laughs> I would love to. But <clears throat> that is a full month, uh, year long commitment for on Wander Lane. You can't do that in a sitting. There's just no way um, to do it. It's not, that's a very advanced and involved um, quilt block the way I do it, right? By doing the applique, um, scanning the pieces into the scan and cut. Now you, you can certainly cut all your pieces out, but uh, no, I'm sorry. Looking forward to the mini quilts. I am too. <clears throat> I think that'll be fun. I think they're adorable. Uh, Me Time asked me to do one of their wedges for the, um, you guys don't have your kits either? Yeah. <clears throat> um, they asked me to do one of the wedges for the Christmas, collectible Christmas for the Christmas tree skirt they're making. And um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into that or not. I would like to do <clears throat> the um, the wall hanging. We don't put a tree up, you guys. You know, it's just Keith and I. And um, I don't even decorate for Christmas. I just don't. We, you know, we leave, we usually leave town for the holiday anyway. So I don't, I don't put a tree up. So the tree skirt not that big of a deal to me. The one I did for Designs by Juju on that video. <clears throat> yeah. Patty says she signed up for the Gnome is Where the Heart is block of the month from Shabby. Is it Shabby Lane or Shabby Fabrics? Uh, Going to have to figure out how to convert to embroidery, not doing it by hand. Right. So that's... um. It's, it's all about figuring out once, once you start with the basics, okay? If you have not done that process before, I recommend you start with a couple of different little shapes that are in the scan and cut. Cut your shapes out, import those into some embroidery software like Stitch Artist 2 from Embrilliance and figure out how to get that done. Get that basic process under your belt, baby steps, right? Then... You got your kid a couple of days ago, Marsha? Okay. All right. Um, they're in the mail then. Okay. that They're in the mail. So what is an SVG file? Lynn wants to know. SVG stands for scalable vector graphic. And a scalable vector graphic, <clears throat> if you think about pictures um, on the internet that, and thank you for asking because that's a great question. If you think about you get a picture uh, on the internet and you you try to make it larger and it pixelates and, and it gets real blurry and you can't see it well and then you have to shrink it back down or whatever. And SVG, the S stands for scalable. So you can scale it big or scale it small and it always stays true to the image that you see. It never pixelates. All right. There are several different and that's a so it's a scalable vector. Don't let vector get you crazy, you know, but graphic, it's an image. It's a graphic. It's a drawing of some sort. So SVG files, there are programs that make SVG files. And the brother scan and cut, when you scan in a paper applique pattern, it creates that vector graphic, but it calls it an F. CM. Okay, Frank, Charlie, Mike, 
FCM file. And that is also a scalable vector graphic. It's just a different format, all right? FCM stands for fancy. It's not cutting machine, you guys. <laughs> it's not cutting machine. Uh, it, yeah, my girlfriend's quilt shop is sending me the kit too, Marsha. Annette, Robbie, uh, not Annette, she works for Sweet Pea. Anyway, um, so it's a, FCM, CM is an algorithm for vector graphics. I'm a nerd, so I know these things. And I spend time researching them because I got nothing better to do with my life. Anyway, so that vector graphic can be converted by embroidery software into applique designs where it gives you a placement line. So you take the vector file because you scanned in the paper pattern. So now the machine has a picture of it. And then you can use it to cut your fabric so you don't have to cut it yourself. Breakfast time. I can hear my dog barking. So you guys, while I've been sitting here chit-chatting about vector graphics, I just sewed down my three points on my, on my, uh, my little triangles. I'm finished. Yay. <laughs> finished. So I got that all done in just a matter of minutes. Okay. I got my binding on. My hanging sleeve is intact and ready to go, and I am finished with this, so it's fantastic. Very exciting. All right, you guys, our hour is up. We'll talk more about um, doing those very advanced applique designs using, um, using uh, embroidery software, okay? And thank you for joining me as I made Peace on Earth. This is a connecting threads, cute little wall hanging. So I put the letters on in the trees using embroidery software by scanning it all into the scan and cut. This has been a lot of fun. All right, you guys, we'll see you tomorrow morning. I hope you have a great day. Give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We have a great time here and we'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.